Hey brothers and sisters, this is your brother Diogenes. Uh, I've decided to cut my videos down to f under five minutes or up to five minutes because I want to get straight to the point and I want you guys to leave with something. I don't like these videos that last 15, 20, 25 minutes. They go on and on and on and you don't learn anything, okay? Another thing, my channel's free. Freely I was given, and freely I will give back. I'm not trying to make millions of dollars off the gospel, like many of these people do out here. When there's people in the world starving and have no money, I don't use God's I don't use God's word to make money. I go get a job like other people do, like Paul did. He was a tent maker. First thing I want to ask you, my brothers, did God command you to celebrate Christmas? We all know that the answer to that is no. God never commanded you to celebrate Christmas. In fact, there are seven biblical feasts in the Bible that God commanded us to keep, to remember Him by. And there's many here that we know nothing about. It's a shame that we know much about Christmas and Thanksgiving and all this, but we don't know anything about the Feast of God. Passover. That's when the angel of death went over the doors of the Israelites and killed the firstborns of Egypt. Alright? Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is when the Israelites made the bread when they were leaving Egypt. They didn't, have, they didn't have enough time to let the bread rise and they left in a hurry. That commemorates the freedom from Egypt the day they left. And we have freedom in Christ, right? First fruit is to thank God for the food. Right? Thanking God for... Thanking God for our daily bread, right? Feast of Pentecost, people were expected to bring their first harvest of grain to the Lord, including two leavened loaves of bread. Feast of Trumpets, during this time all regular work is prohibited and men and women present a food offering to God. God commands his people to gather and to commemorate the decree with trumpet blasts, Feast of Trumpets. Day of Atonement, this was a blood, uh, animal blood sacrifice to atone for the sins of people. And we know now today Jesus is our atonement. But uh, there's something else behind this that I'm still trying to learn myself. Uh, it's in Isaiah. It's, it talks about the sacrificing of, of, of animals that I still have to learn. And I, I don't know everything about this yet. So, And the last is a piece of tabernacles or booths. And I, you guys notice it tells you exactly where to go. Leviticus 23.34. This, this celebrates God's provision and protection for people of Israel. Provision and protection. It's a feast to celebrate God's provision and protection. It's amazing how much we know about uh, the worldly feasts, but we know nothing about God's feasts. This is what people, can you imagine the prophets wearing Santa Claus hats and, and dressing up like Santa and all this stuff like that? You see that? That's what they would do. They would get violent because you know what? God didn't, God didn't, uh, ask anyone to celebrate Christmas they would not be happy about it and I'm not saying you or anyone get violent or anything like that but this is Christmas is not uh, commanded to us to celebrate by God and I apologize because this this video will go over above five minutes see Christmas is about materialism you know who has the best car who has the biggest house the materialistic world. People got so much cars and stuff they don't know what to do with. 
It's about who makes the most money. Sometimes I, I don't like Christmas because it's about who gets the best present, who has the nicest car. But if you, if you're in Christ, if you're in Jesus, every day is Christmas. First, First Thessalonians five it says, "Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances of God's will for you. That is God's will for you in Christ." We have to be thankful, grateful, thankful always. Christmas to me is every day. But godliness, this is First Timothy, First Timothy six. Godliness will be con uh, godliness with contentment is is great gain. We brought nothing into this world; we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Look at how, look at how the. the Look how these the authors of the Bible, man, and the prophets, they're con they're content with food and clothing alone. We're never content, man. We always want more. We always want more cars. We want fancier house. Doesn't it? Doesn't it concern you when you have something real nice and you see the other person and and, and you see you cause people envy? It's, it's messed up, man. The materialism. It says, look, those who want to get rich fall into temptation. Look, verse 9. Those who get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap. Who wants to get rich? Alright, let's love the things of the spirit, you know. Everybody wants to get rich. Let's be content with what God has given us. And let, let's stop chasing after rich. Uh, materialist, materialism.